What is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own public API that runs 24 seven, and it's going to be absolutely for free. We're going to be using a website called Python anywhere. And that allows us to host scripts, which means you can host your bots, your telegram bots, your tweet bots, you can host whatever you like there for free. And here's a small example of what we will be doing just to show you that you can get some JSON data or create an API. Right here, I have an input parameter. So if I enter something here, such as this is a new input, and we click on run, you'll see that we will get back from the server a JSON, which has the fields input, a timestamp and a letter count. So the input here is this is a new input. And this was retrieved today at 1533. And finally, the letter count is 19 letters for this string right here, which is somewhat wrong because it is also counting the spaces, but that's not really the point. The point of this is that you can get some data online and you can always have this as a test API or as a real API that you can use later in a real app. So it's just nice to be able to customize your own apps with your own data because otherwise you always have to search for some free APIs that provide default data such as weather APIs, but this will be a way for you to host your own API with the data that you specify and you can actually put anything you want online and use it later. So the first thing you want to do is start a new project in Python. It can be anywhere. We're just going to call this new project, but you can name it whatever you want. And in the terminal, you want to go ahead and type in pip install requests. And this will allow us to handle the HTTP requests in Python. And if you're using a different IDE, just do whatever you do to make a request. But I will be using Python for this example. And the next thing you have to do is go to this site, which is called Python Anywhere. And I will leave a link in the description down below. And we have to go and sign up. So we will go ahead and type in start running Python online in less than a minute, we will create a beginner account. This username will be called a very epic username. And for email, we'll just type in something random. I don't think it's important at gmail.com. And as a password, I will just type in some password. I will agree to the terms and conditions and register. And as soon as you have signed up, we can go ahead and go to these web tabs because we will be creating a flask app. So let's open up the web tab, we will click on add a new web app. And right here, it will use your username as a custom domain name. So of course, it's going to have my username followed by dot python anywhere.com as the domain. But if you pay for the paid version, you can change that to your own. And we'll just click on next for now, then we have to select which web framework we will be using and we'll just be using flask because that is very simple. And we will click on Python 3.8. This path will be fine, just click on next, and it will create our flask app. So right now we have a server running at this username up here. So configuration for a very epic username dot python anywhere dot com. If we click on that, you'll see that we'll have a custom page that says hello from flask. And we want to change that to give us some JSON data. And to do this, we have to go down to the code. So right here, you can see we have a source code working directory and so on. So what we want to do here is go to the source code. So we're just going to click on go to directory. And you'll see that we'll have a flask app.py. And here is where we will change the code. So right now, as you can see at our app root, we will have hello from flask. And that is just the response for the home page essentially. So what we have to do actually is go ahead and create a few imports. So up here, we will type in from flask import request. Then below we'll type in import JSON and we need to import time for this example. And I will create a few more tutorials on Python anywhere because if you want to import some other packages such as the Twitter API or the Telegram API, we will have to use the bash console to actually import them. But if you have a profound understanding on how computers work, you can probably just do this by yourself and import the files. But for this very basic example, we're just going to create some very simple return JSON. So right now we have the app root, 
and we want to add a few methods to it. So methods are going to equal get and post. And we're going to change the first function to handle request. And just to show you that we can receive an input, we are going to write text is going to equal the string of request dot args dot get. And here we will just type in a keyword such as input, but you can type in whatever word you want in here, because this will be the query word we will be searching for when we make a request. And I'm also just going to paste in a note that can make it easier for you to remember what it does. So as you can see, this will be the endpoint that will allow us to insert an input at the end of our URL. And we are going to type in letter count, or this time we'll actually change this to character count, because that makes more sense. And that's going to equal the length of the text. Then we need to create a data set or a JSON format, essentially. So data set, and that's going to be a map of the values that we will insert. So right now we will return for the input, the text that we insert in the query. For the timestamp, we're just going to return the time dot time. And then for the character count, we are going to return our character count. And after that, we need to change this data set into a JSON. So to do this, we'll type in JSON dump, and that is going to equal json.dumps. And we have to insert the data set. Then finally, we need to return the JSON data. So return JSON dump. Then you need to make sure to save to make sure there are no errors. And then you have to click on this reload button because this will reload the site for us. And once it has reloaded, we can go ahead and see what the site looks like right after. So now we can go ahead and click on home and go to our web section and click on a very epic username dot Python anywhere. And you will see that we will have a custom JSON as a response. And now if we actually add an endpoint such as the query that I mentioned earlier, and for us, that's going to be question mark input equals here we can insert any text we want. So let's just say any text we want and click on enter. And you will see that it will be put into the JSON and you can process that in any way you want in the Flask app. So if you want to add a number or you want to add a date or you want to add a user, you can later process that in the script that you have created on Python anywhere and it will give you a response. So that's why this is a very good place to host your Telegram bot or any script you have on Python. And of course, in a later tutorial, I will go into some more advanced concepts of how to actually do that. But now that we have a working API that counts how many characters we have in this string, and also the timestamp at which we made the request, we can go ahead and go to our Python Anywhere project and get started with the test to see that it actually works the way we want it to work. So the first thing we have to do is import requests as our queue. And from date time, we will import our date and time. Then we have to go ahead and create a constant, which is going to be the base URL. And we have to open our web browser again to see what that is. So for me, it's going to be a very epic username dot python dot anywhere dot com create a pair of quotation marks and insert it inside there. Then for the requests module, we have to type in payload. And that's going to equal for the query of inputs, we will insert what input we want to put inside. So here I'm just going to type in subscribe to code palace exclamation mark, then as a response, we will just call rq.get and it's going to use our base URL. And we have to provide the parameters, which are going to be our payload. Then we are going to create a value called JSON values, which is going to be a response that we just got from the URL. And we're going to convert that to JSON. Then we want to get the values for each one of these. So let's go ahead and create something called request.input or underscore input. And that's going to equal the JSON values at the index of what we want, which is just going to be called input. So this will get the value of input from our JSON. So as you can see here, we have one called input, one called timestamp and one called character count. So we're going to have to copy those 
precisely to get the values from the server. So under that, we can type in timestamp, which is going to equal JSON values at the index of timestamp. And then finally, for the final one, we will type in character count is going to equal JSON values at the index of character underscore count. And now that we have stored those values, all that there is left is to actually print them out. So you can see that we have successfully retrieved them. So we're going to type in formatted string and input is and inside here, we will insert the requested input Then we're going to create two more of these. So print and print formatted string and the date is curly brackets, date time dot from timestamp. And that is the timestamp we got as a JSON value. And for the final one, we will type in character count is and inside here, we need to insert our character count. Now all we have to do is right click on our project and click on run. And you'll see that we'll get the data that we have inserted in our payload and the most recent timestamp followed by the character count of the string that we've inserted into the payload. And that was essentially the basic way to create your own public API. And this will last for up to three months without interruption on the Python Anywhere server. But uh, let's go back to pythonanywhere.com because I also need to show you a way how to renew that in case you don't want to pay. So we're going to go back to open web tab. And as you can see right here, this site will be disabled on Thursday, the 6th of May, 2021. And just to make sure that it runs longer, all you have to do is click on this button again, and it will run for three more months from the time that you clicked on this button. The only downside is that you have to click on this button every three months to make sure that it keeps on running. But other than that, I think it's definitely worth it for creating your own public API that runs 24 seven and that is free. But with that being said, as always, guys, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to look at them. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. See you.